Wreck-It Ralph style Disney logo. My passion bubbles very near the surface, I guess. Coming to terms with your faults. A time-lapse arcade montage is the fastest way to get punched right in the nostalgias. Also, just noticing they put the two main locales center stage. What an amazing visualization of the digital world. As if the glass view screen is just a viewing portal into the infinite world of the game's universe. Every game you've ever played, regardless of genre, was actually an open-world sandbox game. Blanket resourcefulness. So, everybody knows M. Bison, Dr. Robotnik, Bowser, all fantastic inclusions. But is that the Rhino from Altered Beast? That's just awesome. And who's that supposed to be? Smoke? Looks more like the ninja from Shinobi. Anyway, I love his permanent crouching on guard position. Labels not make you happy. Good. Bad. <laughs> you must love you. It's interesting the things they can get away with. I'm assuming, since he isn't credited as Kano, but he clearly is Kano given his fatality, that they didn't get the rights to use Mortal Kombat characters. But they clearly got the rights to Street Fighter. Either way, fun references all around. Ha! The Bad Announce support group is held inside Clyde's Pac Man respawn box? Classic. Obviously, one of the most fun things about this film is the 8 bit and real world to 3D transformations. The cherries, the cable car transportation from games to power strip, even the way the stranded copper conductors work. Ooh, too soon, movie, too soon. But it puts a fun mental image in my head of a group of people sitting around a table arguing whether they should go with Eris, the name potentially more people might know because of the American version of Final Fantasy VII, or Aerith, her name in every other form of media the character appears in. Especially given that they recognize Zero Wing's spectacular American translation. Just as we've come to expect from Disney, the details are phenomenal. From the scuffs on the ground prong of the plug to the accurate amperage and voltage markers on the outlets. Anything to declare. I hate you. Honesty. Because if you die outside your own game, you don't regenerate. Exposition delivered by Sonic the Hedgehog makes exposition taste less exposition-y. This is just a well-told story. No loose ends, no plot points set up and then forgotten. Kubert's game being unplugged is a great setup for our conflict. I could be reading too much into this, but since the Nice Landers have only one tiny little function in the perceivable game, it actually makes sense that their movements are less fluid than the other characters we've seen in the movie, and they retain that 8-bit jerkiness. I always wanted to try cake. Passive aggressive manipulation for the win. Even the cake splatter stays in a mostly pixel orientation. This guy. I'm not gonna say his name because I don't care to start a Japanese versus American pronunciation war since the games and animes can't even agree. Wait, what were we talking about? Right, he's a win. What is this? Who's that? Tough decision time. Do you let the noob peacefully walk into the wall or do you take the easy kill? Every day it's climb the building and then fight bugs! Teetering on the line between kids in the audience getting a little chuckle and all the adults having a serious existential crisis about the building they climb and the bugs they fight every day. They do such a great job of creating an accurate aesthetic and overall feel for each section of the arcade. The retro games have their 2D models adapted to a 3D environment with retro 8-bit sounding music from Henry Jackman, who is obviously always a win, and now we enter Hero's Duty, a conglomeration of Halo, Call of Duty, Medal of Honor with a more futuristic or at least modern electronic score and fully rendered 3D characters. Jane Lynch always impresses me, but I can honestly say I did not know she had this in her. And it's always great to see a predominantly male lead role filled by a female. Because of course that's all we are in first person shooters. Just genius. These monsters become what they eat. Turbo bug shadowing. See, sometimes the blue beam to space is a good thing. It's like the game's gone cuckoo. Like my nana. Hey, Hank made his way into a non-Pixar film. Definition your face. It's amazing. Love at first sight. Grace under pressure. <laughs> and above all, <laughs> dignity. Ironic medal winning. <laughs> Blink and you'll miss it. I'll never understand why Sonic is so underused, but I'll take this classic ring scatter as he's knocked down. Anyone else's teeth hurt after this action sequence? Hi, mister! <laughs> Hello! Geniality. Thank you! And politeness. Cybugs will chew up that game faster than a chicken hawk in a coop of crippled roosters. What was that now? Analogy win. But do you think they'll stop there? Yes! And some optimism. That is a filthy, treacherous lie. Shang Long's never been anywhere. Again impressed by the details. Every piece of Sugar Rush is some kind of candy, from the Truffle Mountains to the Lollipop starting gate. Although there does seem to be some strange segregation among the spectators. Tap for the mutton fudge! Be sweet! Oh, I get it. They're their own individualized cheering squads. Not racist candy. Not racist candy win. Wouldn't be an animated movie from the last decade without Alan Tudyk. That's a fun title screen loop interpretation, making it as if it has an effect on the game dynamics and standings. Taffy thing? Swamp Ralph? 
synchronization hilarity. If you're a fan of pink. Salmon. Salmon, that's obviously Sam. A little hint at the castle's true owner if you're paying attention. Darth Ralph? Wreck it, Vader? Oh, Vanellope. It's so. you. Well, no surprise, Kelly Kapoor is the lead mean girl. Come on, Jumbo. Ralph, my man. My man, man. Nickname wins. Teamwork. Or planning to teamwork. Teamwork planning. Gonna throw a little more credit at Alan Tudyk. If you're one of the few people who can pick his voice out, you may have figured out the twist. Even the plugs show the age of their respective games. Saving your friend with violence? More optimism. Mentos and Diet Cola Volcano. Yeah, that's pretty inventive and on theme. You have to learn how to drive. You can't do that without a track. Helping your new little buddy. What does it say about driving movies when a cartoon with a cart made of candy has more realistic and accurate driving mechanics than the most live action racing movies that treat the clutch and stick shifter like the go faster button? A learning to drive montage is the fastest way to become a princess. Gotta say, I love the way it just clicks for Vanellope, because it's fun wish fulfillment, but it also makes sense since it really is in her code. Yes, Self-confidence. Up, up, down, down. <laughs> See, for me, it was always select start. That way you and your brother get 30 lives in Contra. Oh, that's not blunt force trauma, ma'am. That's just the honey glow in my cheeks. Flirting. To hit every single little detail in this film would be impossible because every single location is packed with funny little jokes. But just as a for instance, the entrance to the castle has marshmallow roasting on a roasting skewer as a light source, a chocolate bar welcome mat slash trap door, and lollipop door knockers. Every detail was really well thought out. Because you're a winner. A winner. And you're adorable. I'm adorable! And everyone loves an adorable winner! Compliments. You know I'm not one to look a gift pun in the mouth, but even for me, they're a little excessive. You hit a guy with glasses. That's, that's well played. However, the fact that King Candy acknowledges it makes me love them all the more. No, he just glazed me. <laughs> Nobody stop him! When the game's plug is pulled. So that's, like, really sad and dark, and it makes me feel better for all the hours, days, let's be honest, weeks I've left games paused. Saving digital souls, man. I made it for you. Generosity. That gets right in the feels. No, 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 please, Ralph! Yikes, this movie just took a turn. But the underlying statement about Ralph having to essentially fulfill his purpose, read programming, to protect his friend while wearing a hero medal given to him by the friend he's protecting, heavy stuff. And it's actually shot like a censored scene, giving even more weight to the heartbreak. Love the use of the orange out of order sign diluting the light to create this dusk feeling which, if the game is going to be unplugged, you could say is the appropriate metaphorical time of day. Boy, so put me back in your filthy mouth again! Fun fact, Sour Bill and Zangief are voiced by the director Rich Moore. Dude's Day in Armageddon just had a baby and it is ugly! Well, that's a poetry win. I know, I know, I know, I'm an idiot. And a real numbskull. A selfish diaper baby. A stink brain. The stinkiest brain ever. Reconciliation. <laughs> King Candy timed the speed boost perfectly, but Adora Beezle must have floored it. Classic noob mistake. I can't say I expected sugar go-kart racing to be such high-octane fun, but they really get your insulin, I mean blood pumping. And no part of the racetrack is boring and every section is beautifully designed. Is that? No way! This twist wasn't so out of left field that it was impossible to guess, but also not telegraphed so hard that it was painfully obvious. Just the right amount of setup. And let's be honest, it's really easy to be tricked into thinking Alan Tudyk is a good guy. Come up and Just go. Go without me. Self-sacrifice attempt. Without a beacon, there's no way to stop these monsters. Beacon. Almost a literal Chekhov's gun. We saw the loaded volcano earlier, and now it must go off. I will never be good, and that's not bad. There's no one I'd rather be than me. Wow, just wow. Self-sacrifice and self-acceptance. Such a genuine moment. <laughs> Saving your big buddy. <laughs> Go into the Further comeuppance. I excuse me. Huh? Love. Oh right, Disney movie. Or is it? I'll give Disney some credit for subverting the princess trope and allowing her to be a strong female character that's not royalty. And Everyone who was ever mean to me shall be <laughs> executed. Justice. Hugging. 
One more fun background detail. Zombie claps with his axes. So now she's just a cheat character, which is perfectly in line with what kids would want. I always picked Eddie Gordo because of his one unblockable roundhouse cartwheel kick. Even the end credits are fun to watch with all the different styles of gameplay and favorite game references throughout the years. Yep, seen that before. You might have thought going into this movie that the game references would be over the top. Hopefully you realize like I did that they're just icing on a well-told if not completely cliche story. Cake. I lost my pastry metaphor there. That being said, the number of references to games, candy, or arcades in general are many. They packed a whole ton of nostalgia into this movie. One of the biggest and really only potentially valid complaints about Wreck-It Ralph is that Ralph only spends time in two video game worlds and doesn't explore the vast universe available to him beyond the end credits. I mean, I'd love to see him briefly walk through Shadow Moses and wave hello to Snake as he's crawling under something, or run up one of Sonic's loops, or fall through a blue hole into Aperture. But really, I think it would have made the film a little bloated, and I like the streamlined narrative that still pays homage to video game culture. Starting with a classic 8-bit platformer in Donkey Kong style, to a hyper-realistic first-person shooter like, well, pick your favorite, to a Mario Kart-style racing game in Candyland. Sure, there are plenty of other genres and styles, and maybe next time Ralph will get lost for years in a Land of the Lotus Eater-style MMO. But we're given just enough to tell the story of two rejected outsiders working together to change their programming. And that's what makes this a movie to come back to. Vanellope pushes the line of annoyance, even to the audience at times, but Sarah Silverman voices her with a young spunk that actually keeps you rooting for her. John C. Riley hits the comedic moments perfectly as Ralph, but surprisingly really shines in the emotional ones as well. His self-sacrifice dive towards the volcano really chokes me up every time. Lynch and McBrayer carried the B story pretty well and had plenty of laugh out loud moments as well. But she rebuffed my affections. There are two sides to the main theme and message of Wreck-It Ralph and both are equally relevant, starting with the Nice Landers that have pigeonholed Ralph into being a bad guy. The prejudice they display is something most everyone has been guilty of. We're not all Gene, but most people have had a Ralph in their life at one time or another. Vanellope, on the other hand, was the victim of, like, almost gaslighting. But her treatment was pretty much the same as the glitch. So the first message is don't prejudge people. Their value to society, i.e. no wreck, no game, and more importantly their value as people shouldn't be measured and quantified the way the game inhabitants do. Period. The second half of that message is to not let people pigeonhole you. Ralph's story starts with him questioning his role. For years, he's accepted that he's just the bad guy and owns that label. He believes if he can win a medal, he'll change the Nice Lander's opinion of him. And in the end, he ultimately accepts his societal label as a bad guy, even though what he's doing is literally the most noble, selfless, good guy thing anyone can do. And I love that both he and Vanellope use the things that make them undesirable to either save themselves or each other. Through his experiences with Vanellope, he learns that true acceptance has nothing to do with accolades. And more than acceptance, he was actually yearning for friendship, which he gets in the end. Feel good movie all around. Personally, I appreciate truncated conflict, so this movie was right up my alley. Fun project for Disney. I'm excited to see where they take it from here. As long as they find something for Alan Tudyk to do again, I'll be good. There are so many possibilities for a story, and next time they won't get slowed down with the setup. So many characters to explore, so many truths to unleash. I mean, not even Master Chief is safe. It smells like Ralph in here. History will long revere your courage and sacrifice. Oh, well, thank you. You have etched in the rock of virtue a legacy beyond compare. You are the universe's greatest hero. Hey.